Uh, just stated we are in story number 218. 218. And um, we're looking at Jesus enters Jerusalem. Um, we, we recognize that uh, Jerusalem is called the Holy City. It is in the surroundings of Jerusalem where the, the actual um, payment of sin is taking place. The initiation of the uh, description of how sin was going to be paid was first showed to us in Egypt. You remember that? That was when Moses was dealing with Pharaoh and in that very last plague was the uh, the plague of the what the death angel and he said that you have to go in and you have to slaughter a lamb put the put the blood on the doorpost and as long as you were in there the death angel would not bother you all right and that was a description of what was going to happen not in Egypt but in Jerusalem Egypt is a type of sin Jerusalem is a type of the uh, the presence of God and we know that sin cannot be in the what in the presence. presence of God When God creates the new heavens and the new earth He's going to create a city and he's going to call it new Jerusalem All right. So Jerusalem is imp important in that aspect We see that even today that, that, that that city is still what in the news always something going on All right, uh, there's a lot of spiritual aspects to that 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 uh, I wish I could explain. I just know that it's interesting that it's always active. Um, and we could probably do a lot on that, but that would take a whole different study. All right, so let's take a look at our study today. And we're going to go ahead and uh, get the reading portion in here. Let's turn that volume up. And Story 218, Jesus enters Jerusalem. And when he entered Jerusalem and came into the temple, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is Jesus the prophet, who is from Nazareth of Galilee. And blind and lame men came to him there in the temple, and he healed them. And the chief priests and the scribes, seeing the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, were very displeased. And they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, did you never read that out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you prepared praise? And after looking all around, he departed and went out of the city for Bethany with the twelve, since it was already late, and he lodged there. All right. So we see here the entering into Jerusalem. And... Once again, we're seeing this mixture of people. We're going to see these three groups here. And I'll point them out as we get to them. Um, but it says, and when he had entered into Jerusalem, we talked about that being the city. And then not only did he go into Jerusalem, but he went into the what? Into the temple. Okay. And so he's in the place where God said that initially during the time of David uh, and during the time of Moses, uh, when Moses had the... Um, the tabernacle, uh, and then David built the temple. I should say Solomon built the temple. David set up the building of the temple. The presence of God was to be there. And so here now, in Jerusalem, the city, the holy city, in the temple, who's in there? The presence of who? God. Of God. God is in the temple. All right? Uh, and all the city was stirred, saying, who is this? And so the question, who is this? And that question is still being asked today. Different people want to know, well, who do you think Jesus is? And who is Jesus to you? And who is he to you? Some people say he's a good man. He's a good teacher. He's a great prophet. But Jesus is the Savior. He is God. He is God come in flesh. Jesus said, uh, the, the scripture says that he is the what? He is the Word. Right? And so they said, who is this? And then the who? The crowd said. So the crowd says, this is Jesus, the prophet, whom is from Nazareth of Galilee. Now, that's not a, that's not a wrong answer. No, that's the correct answer. But it's not complete. Mm -hmm. There's more to that. See, I could say, well, tell me about Julius. Well, Julius is a man. And is that correct? Yes. 
But I, did I really tell you anything significant about him? I just no. gave you basically the obvious. Right? Now I tell him he's a husband. Right? That's true too. Mm -hmm. But there's still more to it, right? Amen. You know, he's a father. And then we can keep going on and on. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing with Jesus. To what degree do you want to know him? David said, oh, that I might know, know him. him. And so the desire that you have to know him will get you to the point where you can know layer after layer, circumstance after circumstance, reality after reality. But your desire to know has to be there. Yes, sir. Is, 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 do you think that's what confuses people a lot about Christ because of all the different layers he has? Without a doubt. You know, because they take one layer and say, oh, that's well, he's just a prophet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's other layers where he's the son of God. He's mm -hmm. the word of God. Mm -hmm. He's the bright morning star. He's yeah. God in the flesh. He's yeah. the word. Mm -hmm. He's all of that. So I guess they can't grasp all that. and Because with the natural mind and natural thinking, we try to keep Christ in a certain thing that mm -hmm. he's a man. Right. Yep. And I guess that's what have people so confused with. That's true. When you were speaking, it just made me think, we do that to each other, so we already do that to each other. Mm -hmm. we, and we can't think past of say, you know, what a person is, that they may be more than that. How can we possibly do that with, with God? Mm -hmm. we do that with each other. We do. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, for instance, like he was using Brother Jews as an example. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I know Brother Jewish right. as Brother Jewish. I know he's a father, I know he's a husband and all that. But there's other things about him I don't even know. Right. Right. You know, he could be sitting there and I don't even know. The man could be a multi-millionaire. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew. I was saying. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, just, you just don't know. You don't know. You don't you know. know. But you, you assume, but you don't know. Right. But then you, the... The aspect of, of getting to know is the relationship that you build. Mm -hmm. So you build friendships, you build uh, 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 camaraderie. Um, uh, you, as, as his wife, have built that ultimate relationship where you can get to know him. All right? But uh, the one that knows us the best is who? It's oh. God. Mm -hmm. And then God says, well, why don't you get to know me mm -hmm. like I know you? Mm -hmm. And so we, he wants to allow us but the problem that we have as you pointed out a lot of times is that people will learn a certain level and think oh that's it mm -hmm. that's and they, need to know. they think I've, I've, I've got the answer and in reality you don't have the answer the answer should have you mm -hmm. because the answer is God to all of our situations and all of our problems we you know we bring everything to God bring everything to Jesus but in doing that, we get to know him in a variety of different ways. Right? We know him as a way maker. We know him as a comforter. We know him as a, as a keeper. We know him as a, a, a deliverer. We get to know the Lord in so many different ways. Uh, as an instructor, um, he will help you in, uh, in so many things in dealing with your own personal life. But to what degree are you going to get to know him? So when you look at what you're doing right now, you're mining for gold. You're in the Word, digging, trying to get to know the Lord. And I can't emphasize how much value the Lord puts on that. Um, David made that statement when he said that, uh, uh, oh, that I might know him with the understanding. Good morning. Yeah, they're, they're in the other room. And, and, and to mm -hmm. and to get to know uh, God under those types of situations that sometimes daily struggles bring, oftentimes we think, well, why do I have to go go here? And sometimes it just um, amazes me. It's like, wow, I went through that because God wanted to, me to see a certain thing about how He can relate to me. Because oftentimes we look at it as being horrible. <laughs> Why am I going through this? But yet God's trying to say, let me show you how I can bring you through this. Because you, you were trying to create the image and the picture that our society cre creates. You know, where it says you should have, you know, this, this level of health and this level of wealth and this level of prestige. And, and everybody has those little markers 
that we all try to get to, you know. And I'm not saying that those are wrong, mm -hmm. but those are our society's markers. God will decide sometimes that I want to bring you to a level of getting to know who I am. But in order to do that, I need you to go down this road. I need you to go down this, 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 this situation. You know, you can have really good tires on a car, but when you want a flat, dry road, you just, they just like somebody's got, you know, halfway bald tires, he's doing the same thing you're doing. But let conditions get bad. Let the road get slippery, get hilly. Now, all of a sudden, the guy with the really good tires is being identified because he can make it up the hill when it's slippery. With the guy with the halfway ball tires is struggling. So in the midst of difficulties, the depth of what you have is identified. Your relationship with the Lord is identified not on the wonderful, smooth, even, you know, cool, beautiful days, but in the struggle. Then God can say, Let me, you, you didn't know you could go up this hill, did you? You thought you would slip and slide off. But look, you've made it up. But you did it because of the relationship that you've built with the Lord. And then yet, sometimes you think, okay, well, well I, I got through this. I guess I'm good. Well, maybe you are, but you may have another hill to go up. But when it's all said and done, the struggle predicts the height. Oftentimes, we don't want the struggle. And, and, I, I, and I speak of my family. I'd rather, you know, I don't want the struggle. You want somebody to throw you in the lion's den? You want somebody to throw you in the furnace of fire? Yeah, I, I'll pass on that. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord says, I want you to go through that, because he's saying, you don't realize what kind of tires I put in you. You don't realize what kind of situation I have placed into your spirit and into your heart. But the only way you're going to know it is for you to go through those difficulties. So uh, oftentimes we get frustrated and get mad at, and people get mad at God. Because why do I have to go through this? Nobody else is going, yeah, but nobody else got the kind of tires you got, spiritually mm -hmm. speaking. I've given you, but you got to trust in them. Mm -hmm. And you got to allow me to use them. And so you can find that about that relationship. And so that depth of knowing the Lord is important. The crowd knew of him. And they, they were able to say, I know where he's from. I know he's a prophet. And that's true. He was from he was uh, from Nazareth of Galilee and he was a prophet. But he was much more than that. And it goes on and it says, And the blind and the lame men came to him there in the temple. Here's God in the temple and he's doing what? He's bringing healing. Mm -hmm. Alright? In the temple. And he healed them. Alright? And so you think everybody should be, wow, this is a great day. We should all just be happy and magnifying and praising God, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's keep reading. So, so we saw what the crowd was doing, but now we got the religious leaders. Mm -hmm. And the chief priests and the scribes. These are what? Religious, religious leaders. leaders. These are the people that are teaching the folks of Jesus' day about God. Mm -hmm. All right? But look at what they're saying. Seeing the wonderful things that he did. And the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Recognizing that he is the what? The promised Messiah that was promised to come through the, the lineage of David. Were very displeased. They were upset. Now here's, here's God in the holy city, in the temple, healing the lame. And the religious leaders are upset. They're disappointed. They're displeased. And then G what Jesus had to do was go back to scripture. He went back to Psalms 8 and 2. And Psalms 8 and 2 says, For out of the mouth of infants and nursing babes you have established strength. So he went on in, uh, in this and he said, uh, And they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? They're complaining to Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Yes, did you never read? Look at that. Did you what? Never, never read. read. What is he talking about? Do you not read the Bible? Mm -hmm. Have you never read? And Jesus often would criticize them about their lack of scriptural comprehension. Mm -hmm. Did you never read that out of the mouth of babes, that, that out of the mouth of infants, 
and nursing babes, you've perfected praise. And uh, after looking around, with uh, he departed and uh, went out of the city uh, for Bethany. So now he looked around. He saw that these religious leaders what did not approve or did not what want him there. So what did he do? He left. He left. Okay. Uh, when the Lord comes into the heart of a person and the person doesn't want the Lord, what does he do? Amen. Right. The church of Laodicea. Jesus was what? That was still the church, but he was on the what? Outside. outside. And he was, but what was he doing on the outside? Mm -hmm. Knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. Still trying to say, it's not too late, just let me in. You can let me in. And I, I, if you let me in, if you open the door, I will come in. Mm -hmm. So these religious leaders of, of, of his day are very much like the religious leaders that are described by the church of Laodicea. And the end time apostate church that they're going to have Jesus out. They, Jesus was in the temple, mm -hmm. but they were so displeased that he ended up being what? Out of the temple. But he will come in if you what? Open the door. All right. He went to Bethany uh, with the who? With the 12. twelve. So who went with him to Bethany? The twelve. The 12. Those disciples. Those ones that he has taught, the ones that have uh, basically said, I'm going to spend my life learning and following you. Since it was uh, already late, uh, he lodged there. Right? So he stayed there in, in Bethany. So you see the, um, the dysfunction that is in the religious structure of Jesus' day. Um, unfortunately, that hasn't changed. There's a lot of religious institutions are filled with what? Dysfunction. Because if they're dealing, once again, with trying to establish themselves as being powerful. And like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes of Jesus' day, they wanted to have the authority over people. When we have pointed out time and time again, Jesus said, if you want to lead, if you want to be great, what should you do? Serve. So the service that you give makes you the leader. You know, the scripture says that the husband should be the what? The head yeah. of the house. So that means the husband should do what? Lead. How do you lead? Serve. By serving. Serve. You serve. But we, we have so misshapen what true leadership is that we look at the, well, the person that's in the head should be sitting up on the high, sitting up, you know, on the, in, in, in the big seat, talking about bring me my bring me my drink, bring me my my food, and give me my entertainment, and you know just barking out orders here and there, when that person is the one that should be bringing in the bulk of the responsibility, should be handling the service, should be making sure that the things are are handled uh, from a servant servant standpoint, uh, but we have so misshapen what leadership is. The leadership described by Jesus, these Pharisees and Sadducees did not believe in. They they wanted the people to honor them. They wanted the people to. Uh, so when the people started praising who Jesus, Jesus, they got upset. But why were the people saying that about Jesus? Because he was in the temple doing what serving. Sure. He was using what he had to help people. A person in leadership should be using what they have to help the people that. Uh, are around him that he so called is leading so how are you using your resources to help and so those are unfortunately the misshaping ideals that we have in our day today um, everybody wants to have uh, 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 you know, leadership situations but nobody really wants to be in the sense of serving uh, I can go on and on with that but uh, I think you get the point. <laughs> All right. Any other comments or questions? If not, let's go to story 219. Let's take a look. Listen to that. Story 219. The cursing of the fig tree. And on the next day, in the morning, when they had departed from Bethany, he returned to the city, and he became hungry. 
and seeing at a distance a lone fig tree in leaf by the road, he went to it to see if perhaps he would find anything on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing on it except leaves only, for it was not the season for figs. And he answered and said to it, No longer will there ever be any fruit from you. May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples were listening, and at once the fig tree withered. All right. This is a very interesting story. So you look at this and you you look at all the miracles that Jesus did um, and they all seem to have um, brought growth and life and expansion and development. This is one that brought a withering. And you go say, well, why? Why did this bring a withering? He's coming around. They're getting ready to go on the next day uh, from Bethany back to Jerusalem. They're going back to the Holy City. And they see a fig tree. And on the fig tree, uh, he's looking at it. He's going, okay, I'm going to see if there, if there are, are, are figs on it. And he sees the leaves. And it should be what, the, what they call the early figs. They, they have two. There's a season for figs, which it points out that this was not the season for figs. But, but if there's leaves on the tree, that means that there were early figs. Um, and figs that should have been there. Um, it's like the first figs, then you get the leaves, then you get the, the, the second uh, figs. Well, he didn't find it. There was nothing there to eat. <clears throat> and you think about this. And then what he does is he says, well, because you are growing and you don't have on you what you should have at this time. What you, what you do have is going to be what? Taken away from you. The fig tree is a representation of who? Israel. The nation to whom God gave the oracles of God. He gave the instructions. He said, you're going to bring forth my word. You're going to carry my word. And they're an example and a, and a type uh, 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 described by the fig tree. And so, similarly, when Jesus comes to Jerusalem, he doesn't find the religious situation set up to what? To feed the people. They have a religious what? Action. They have the temple. They have activity. They have these various things and services that are going on, but there's no real what? Meat being given out. Nothing that's going to what? Be able to strengthen. So, as an example of what uh, he's seeing, even on this fig tree, is happening in Jerusalem. It has the appearance that it should have something nourishment on it because you can see the leaves. And then when he gets to it, he sees that there's nothing there. So then what he says is that, well, no longer will, will ever be any fruit from you. No one uh, ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples were listening and at once the fig tree withered. So what he is pointing out is that at this particular time, there is nothing going to come from that religious structure. Everything in that is going to what? Wither. That religious structure is basically dead. It's still active in the sense that there's people in it. But it's withered. It has turned into an a enemy to the things of God. You cannot defeat the things of God. God what God says is going to happen is going to happen. And so um, this to me gives the the essence of what's going on uh, in the city that he's heading to. He's heading back to where? Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, he's not going to find anything um, that will, will help and nourish him. But at the same time, what he is going to find is that uh, the prophecies, what was said, is going to continue to happen. Nothing is going to change what was designed. The sad thing is that it has to come at the resistance of the religious leaders. See, it's not going to change what God's going to do. 
But what's sad is that it has to be done without you. It's going to happen. But you're not going to have any part in it. Though you were given the what? The greatest opportunity. The greatest information. The greatest insight. But you tried to turn it to do things for your what? For yourself. What nature is that? It's the nature of Satan. Satan. Satan was given the greatest glory. He was given the greatest opportunities in all of heaven. But he tried to do what? Take God's place. He tried to. And so these individuals, when they see people praising God in the form of who? Jesus. Mm -hmm. They want to do what? Take God's place. place. Mm -hmm. These folks should be saying, they shouldn't be talking about you like that. That's for us. us. So it's a bad situation. Um, and so we see that Jesus symbolically goes through this action here and he shows that, that this fig tree which represents Israel um, is going to wither. And um, Israel from this point um, still has never um, developed back to where it, it once was in the prominence of being the leader for God. But it will. Because we remember we went to the book of Revelation and the Lord says that he's going to send the 100 and what? 44,000. And the angel was witnesses. I can tell you that. <laughs> These are 144,000 Jews from what? From every tribe. Right. So he is not done with Israel. He, Israel was, is God's what? Chosen people. And he's never going to reject them uh, as a as his chosen folks. They're still going to bring forth the oracles and the word of God. They're going to do it in the tribulation. Mm -hmm. But right now, they've withered. Mm -hmm. They have been dried up. Uh, and, and yet, uh, the, the things of God are still going to go. And he says, that when we uh, see the writings of Paul in the book of Acts, he says, well, from this time forth, and even Peter said, from this time forth, I'm going to go where? To the Gentiles. Gentiles. And that's where the, the word of God was carried, even to this, to this point. Mm -hmm. It's carried through the, through the, the other nations. Mm -hmm. All right. Any comments or questions on that? Yeah, that Gentile thing when you just said it. Mm -hmm. And most people, I hear these people saying that they are not Gentiles. Well, a Gentile, from the definition of the scripture, is anyone that is non-Jewish. Right. So that means he's if you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. Right, and they're saying, he's saying, no, I'm not a Gentile. I'm the lost tribe, and then he goes into the... Oh, well, see, these are, these are other people that are trying to claim um, their, their Israel heritage, which right. they, they may or may not have, and uh, I don't give them a whole lot of... The Lord knows who they are. Amen. And, and there's, no, there's no lost tribes. God didn't lose anybody. Lose anybody. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say um, a lot of Christians um, take issue with um, the Jews being the chosen people. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that I have you know, had many conversations and they just can't grasp them. But like, it's like they're in the Bible. You know, mm -hmm. they're his chosen people. They are. You know, we have to you know, acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's well, in the scriptures, but they some want to acknowledge it, but they'll say that those particular Jews are African American, mm -hmm. and the Bible don't say you know what color they are, mm -hmm. and that that's where we lose our relationship with God, trying to put color on God and mm -hmm. Jesus, you know. And I don't know why people do that because. Jesus came to take away one thing, and that's sin. And we all have sin. And I don't know why they don't want to deal with the sin. Mm -hmm. That's the main problem right there. The sin is the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, when it's all said and done, people like elevating themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to eliminate the Jews because I'm, I'm the one. God's dealing through, through me now. Mm -hmm. And yes, God is working through the Gentiles now. But he's not done with the Jews. That means that God broke his promise to Abraham. He broke his promise to Noah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, not Noah, to Moses. Mm -hmm. he, he, he broke his promise to David. Mm -hmm. If God is not going to deal with the Jews anymore. Then that makes, God, that makes God a what? A lie. A lie. And he cannot, and he cannot lie. lie. 
So to me, it is extremely obvious, but I also have to realize that when you don't want to know the truth, the obvious is not obvious. If you want to know the truth, the obvious becomes what? Very plain. Mm -hmm. But that deals with the nature of your what? Of your heart. And so a lot of people have a heart that allows them to be deceived, allows them to not see plainly because their heart is turned into uh, uh, self-motivated uh, uh, illumination. Anything that's going to make me look wonderful, I see that. But I don't see anything that it that, that, that takes from me. So um, unfortunately, uh, we're going to see that until the, until the coming of Jesus. All right. Which is kind of sad. All right. Any other questions on that portion? If not, we're going to do one more portion here, and then we'll stop, and then we'll get into that uh, experiment that they, the, the kids are doing. So let's take a look. Story two twenty. Story two twenty: the second cleansing of the temple. And they came to Jerusalem. And Jesus entered the temple of God, and he began to cast out all those who were buying and selling in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers, and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he would not permit anyone to carry goods through the temple. And he began to teach and said to them, It is written, and my house will be called a house of prayer for all the nations. But you have made it a robber's den. All right. So... Jesus has went back into the temple. He was in the temple the first time, and what was he doing? Healing. Healing. He came back into the temple the second time, and what was what's he doing now? He's cleansing. He's overthrown. When Jesus came to earth the first time, he came to heal what? Sin. When he comes the second time, he's coming to do what? To take over. He's going to be so-called knocking over. He's knocking over tables and, and seats. He's going to be knocking over kingdoms mm -hmm. when he comes the second time. You see the corollary there? Mm -hmm. You see the beauty mm -hmm. in that? Is that when he comes again, he's not coming to be nailed to a cross. He's already done that. He's already did that. Amen. When he comes this time, he's coming, he's going to knock over all the oppressors of our world like he went into this temple here. Mm -hmm. And he knocked over all those that are oppressing the people in the, in the religious institution. Look at this. It says, he came to Jerusalem, God's holy city, entered into the temple, the place where the presence of God is supposed to be. And he began to do what? Cast out. Why would you cast out? Because the, the, what's supposed to be in the temple? The presence of God. Presence of God. But obviously there was not the presence of God. There was the presence of what? The Satan. enemy, Satan, mm -hmm. and, 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 and selfishness and, and greed. Why? Because those people were in there buying and selling in the temple. What are they trying to do? I'm going to use the church to get my what? My gain, my riches. I want to use the church to get my blessings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get rich. Through the, do we hear that kind of conversation going on in the church today? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to get rich through, through the things of God. God's going to make me what? Rich. Well, why don't you just get rich in knowing him? Mm. But no, they want what? Money. All right. but, but the scripture says the what? The love of money is only the root of some evil. Oh, okay. Just want to make sure. It says, and he overthrew the tables. So the places in which they were, they were uh, making their exchange all right, uh, the, uh, of the money changes. Because right, these people would come in and they had all these little elaborate uh, 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 schemes in which, well, you can't, use, you can't bring Roman money in here. You only could use temple money. Mm -hmm. So give me the Roman money and I'll exchange it for the equivalent of the temple money. So you can use it. We don't, we, we don't use that heathen money here. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they just collected that heathen money. And when they would exchange it, they would exchange it with the temple money and they weren't giving them e equal value. Mm -hmm. Right? And so they were doing all kinds of, of, of just crooked stuff. Because, once again, they're not trying to serve the people. They're trying to devour the people. That's right. I want what you got. These people, when th these religious leaders, unfortunately, had no concern for the people. They had concern for what they were going to get by the people. 
I need you to help me to get my, my, my luxury stuff. I need, my, I need a new chariot, a new horse, a new donkey. Mm -hmm. and, and I got to get me my, my, a new hut or whatever it is they was living in. And today is the same thing. All right. So everybody uh, uh, were trying to just find out what they can take from the people that were coming there to do what? To worship God. And these people were sincere. They're trying to know who God is. And they listening to these religious leaders and they're being what? Robbed. Wow. So Jesus overthrew the tables. He overthrew the money seats. Those that were selling the doves. The doves were there to do what? So they could offer what? Sacrifice. The sacrifices. Right? So they had the religious, the things that were, were, were spoken about by what? By Moses. Mm -hmm. They had the, the, the artifacts of Moses' description there. But they were what? Misusing it. Churches today have the Bibles there. They have the Word of God in the churches. But what are they doing? They, they're misusing it mm -hmm. to manipulate people. They keep mm -hmm. quoting from, from like one or two places. They keep telling you, if you don't bring your money and you curse with a what? Curse, curse. with a curse. Using one or two th scriptures to get you to feel what? Guilty. Mm -hmm. Not trying to help you to develop who you are in your relationship with, the God, with, with, with God. They're trying to make you feel guilty that you, if you want to uh, be blessed of God, you need to give me everything you got. Mm. Oh, yeah. Give until it hurt. You ever heard people say that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Give until it hurts. That's right. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, the fresh fruits. Okay. It says, and he did not permit anyone to carry any goods to the temple. Now, let me, let me just say this. This is Jesus is what? One person. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, when you see people draw pictures of Jesus, he always looked kind of emaciated, kind of looks kind of you know, thin and kind of, you know, just this scrawny. Um, I often think of Jesus as like, if when Jesus wanted to, he could be like Samson. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, you ain't coming through here. <laughs> and guess what? You, you ain't, ain't coming, coming through here. <laughs> <laughs> right? uh, Jesus like, no, no, you, you better find a different way to go. You ain't coming through here. Not with that stuff. Not today. It ain't happening today. You're not selling. You're not robbing people today. Today's not the day for robbing people. Worship God. All right. and, he, and he began to do what? To teach. teach. You're not going to rob folks, but I'm going to teach them. And, and you wonder, what did he teach? And you look at here and he says, And he said to them, It is what? Written. It is written. My house will be called a house of what? Prayer. This is what you're coming in here for, to communicate with God. That's why you come here. For, for house of prayer for some nations. Oh. Oh. All nations. No, no it's just for the just for the, the, the people that live in Jerusalem. Oh. House all of nations. prayer for all nations. That means that what? All are what? Welcome to come to God. But he said, but you have made it a robber's den. You made it a den of thieves. You turned it into a place where you can actually manipulate and systematically steal from people all right now that ain't new because people state that there are heads of state and, and, and governments that systematically steal from people to this okay. day they systematically steal all right and so if you don't believe it look at your look at your bless you look at your checks your, 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 your pay stub yeah. all right they systematically <laughs> steal they, they take it, take. All right? And so, um, and it's built into the system. Mm -hmm. It's built into how, and, and, and what you going to do about it? Yeah. All we do is we tell God, we tell the Lord, this, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, and the Lord does what? He makes a way. He carries you through. He's carried us to this point. And guess what? I think he's going to keep us going. Amen. All right? And sometimes you look at it. If somebody would have told you back in the, you know, in the, in the 90s, would you have been paying for gas? You'd be like, oh, how, how would I have been able to live? I don't think I'd have been. God made a way, didn't He? Amen. Mm -hmm. If they would have told you back in the in the in the late eighties or nineties, what you would have to pay for 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 a, a mortgage or for a rent or for you'd be like, what? I don't. I, but God, but God, God's making a way, isn't He? Mm -hmm. If they would have told you what it was going to cost you to uh, send, send to to send your kid to college, you'd have been like, who? Well, I guess. But guess what? What has happened? God does what? He makes a way. Right? And so as you, as you continue to live for the Lord, you begin to realize the devil wants us to have what? Fear. Worry. 
uh, uh, despair. Mm -hmm. But God is saying, I'm going to carry that. And so when you look at the news, the news all tells you, oh, look at the crazy stuff that's going on. And I, I have to admit that it, I had to learn that. Because I used to be like, I don't know what this stuff means. No sense, you know, okay, how am I going to get, you know, you have all that kind of, but then as you get into the word, you begin to realize, wait a minute. Back in the 70s, when prices were here, now look at them in the 90s. Mm. And now that I got children, I'm trying to raise, I'm thinking it's out, outrageous. But he carried me through. Mm -hmm. And now that we're in 2018, and I look at, well, 90s really wasn't too bad. <laughs> Those prices. <laughs> But back then you were kind of like, I can't believe what it cost, this and that. And not to say that it was easy, mm -hmm. but he, what? He carried you through. So but I'm starting to go, I said, you know what? I think he's going to continue to carry me through. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy. Mm -hmm. And sometime I may have to do so. He's going to say, well, you know, lift that up. Remember when Jesus told Peter, when it was time to pay the taxes, and he told mm -hmm. Peter to do what? Go fish. Go fish. So he had to what? Get his rod and reel and go go down to the brook or the river, wherever mm -hmm. he fished at, and go fishing. He basically what? Went to work. Mm -hmm. But when he when he caught that particular fish, it had what? Something inside something of it. In God always seems to have a way, and, and that's something that I that you have to learn that he he's got he's you got to trust. He's got your back. Mm -hmm. He's there for you. Though you may seem like you're going up and down, struggling, but well, God is like. You have no idea how how smooth I've made the road for you. Mm -hmm. You seem to think you're going up and down, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But but you're in my hands. I'm guiding you. Who's going to stop you? Mm -hmm. If God opens the door, who's going to shut it? No man. No man. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's important to keep in mind that God has what you need. Uh, we just got to make sure that we hold we're holding on to God. But here's the, here's the thing. Even sometimes when we feel like we can't hold on to God, God is doing what? Holding on to us. And I always use that example about the child crossing the street. When you got a, a two-year-old and you cross the street, you don't have the two-year-old holding what? Your hand. You're holding the two-year-old. Because the two-year-old might what? Let go. Mm -hmm. But if you're holding it, whether he lets go or not, you still have the what? Control. The control. And that's what God says. I got you. Mm -hmm. Even when you feel like you can't hold on no more, mm -hmm. I'm still holding on to you. Amen. And so we just always have to, to believe it and trust in that. Yeah, well, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll come in when they're ready, but we're going to go ahead and get started with this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to stop here. <laughs>